Is it possible to build a bulletproof vest from things you can buy in the hardware store? Let's find out on today's episode of GDS. Okay, so I watched a couple of videos of people doing this and uh, what I've learned is that most people use a combination of uh, fiberglass, epoxy and ceramic tile. So my plan is to build a couple of smaller test plates before building the larger one to figure out how many layers of fiberglass we need and so on. Hmm. Let's go to the store. Okay, so this is the grand total, but I won't be using all of this material, so the cost per plate is lower. I also want to mention that I'm doing this just because I think it's a fun and interesting project. I would never actually use this, and I certainly don't recommend that anyone else do it either. Here's the actual plan. The first layer is uh, mild steel. This will hopefully slow the bullet down and cause shrapnel to fly all up in your face. Then comes the ceramic tiles, followed by the fiberglass, and finally another piece of steel at the back as sort of a last resort. Let's build the test plates. Fiberglass is a bitch to work with as it easily frays at the ends uh, when you cut it, so I usually apply some tape beforehand to help it stay together. The plates are going to be 10 by 10 centimeters, which works out perfect uh, with this size of ceramic tiles. One challenge with building something like this is layer adhesion, so I'm trying this universal glue to hopefully keep the metal and ceramic tiles together. I also added one layer of fiberglass in between for the same reason. I'm making three plates, one is just the metal to see how it performs, uh, one is 9 layers of fiberglass and the other one is 15 layers. I used a vacuum packer to help the resin spread evenly throughout the plate and to make sure there wouldn't be any air pockets. Then I stacked the plates and put something heavy on them. Okay, so just the metal alone weighs 158 grams, the plate with 9 layers weighed 516 grams and the 15 layer one weighed 568 grams. Okay, so we're starting off with only the metal versus a 22 long rifle and it should be no surprise, it barely put a dent in the metal. Moving on to 9mm, it definitely has more kick to it. You can see the plate flies away when it gets hit. Somewhat surprisingly, the metal alone was enough to stop the 9mm. Of course, it was severely deformed and you would probably have a very bad day if you were to get hit wearing only the metal. But because we were expecting the 9mm to punch through the mild steel, we unfortunately didn't bring any higher caliber weapons. 
Regardless, we moved on to test the metal ceramic fiberglass plates. And as you can see, we definitely have some layer adhesion problems as the back metal plate is knocked off even though it's only a 22. On the bright side, the front metal plate seems to stay on, so the glue is definitely helping. We also tried shooting the plate from the back to see how it would fare if the metal was only on the back. It stopped the bullet, but again the plate started separating, and with this setup you have a very low probability of shrapnels flying all up in your face, and that's a pretty fun time, so I think for the bigger version the metal is going to be on the front. Okay, so for the full size plate, I'm making it 25 by 30 centimeters or 10 by 12 inches. I also want to make this plate look good, so I'm going to cut off the upper corners. Next, I lay the ceramic tile over the metal and cut away any excess. Since our previous test didn't give us any information on how many layers of fiberglass is the most effective, I randomly went with 20 layers. I've seen people use a lot more, though as I've said fiberglass is a bitch to work with and I really couldn't be fucked. Okay, so here I've clamped the metal in between two pieces of wood in my bench vise, and I'm bending the edges to make the plate more curved for a better fit. At this point it's really starting to look good and I'm happy to see how it's turning out. And so next I sanded the inside and cleaned it with some acetone to hopefully help the glue stick better. I originally planned on using the angle grinder to cut the ceramic tiles at the corners, but unfortunately I didn't have the right disc for cutting ceramic, so I ended up just snapping each separate tile instead. When I built the test plates I didn't really let the glue dry properly before applying the resin and fiberglass. This caused the glue and resin to interact a little bit and turn white, and I'm not sure if this affected the adhesion, but this time I let the glue dry a bit more before moving on to the fiberglass. I also decided to fill in the gaps in between the ceramic tiles with glue. I used a vacuum packer when I built the test plates, but the full size plate is too big to fit in those bags so I used a vacuum storage bag instead. It's the same principle but instead of using a vacuum sealer you use your vacuum cleaner to suck out the air. 
To prevent any resin from getting sucked into my vacuum cleaner, I put an old rag in the bag and I also tape a toilet roll to the vacuum hose just in case. Okay, so the plate was done, and now all that was left to do was to test it. Starting out with 9mm, we knew that the metal alone was able to stop it. Despite this, I was still impressed with how little the plate deformed, but as you can see we still have some issues with layers separating. And now for the moment of truth. After all that planning and testing and working and waiting, will the plate be able to stop a 222 rifle round? Okay, so that didn't work. Uh, whatever, man, let's try the 30 odd 6 just for the fuck of it. Tror du han överlevde? Okay, so in conclusion, the 2 mil mild steel was apparently enough to stop the 9 mil, uh, and I feel like we're close to stopping the 222, because you can see the copper jacket stripped from the lead upon impact. I definitely want to revisit this and possibly try some other materials you can find in the hardware store, like uh, polyethylene tarps or maybe including like uh, steel wire in the, uh, in the plate. If you have any suggestions, uh, leave them in the comments and uh, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next video. Peace.